Hey guys, Andy here, and today on Andy Talks Japan, I'm going to be talking to you about my first semester studying abroad here in Tokyo, Japan. Coming up. So yeah guys, this spring 2020 semester has come and gone, and I wanted to make a little video talking about my experiences for my first semester studying abroad out here in Tokyo, and also of a lot of the challenges that I faced along the way as well. So, with that said, let's start at the beginning, right? At the end of December 2019, woo, I came out here to Tokyo, and then I started class in mid-January, and from there, things are going pretty good. One of the interesting things that I noticed in my classes is that more often than not, I'm usually the only American there. Uh, the only other class that had another American besides me was my Comp 2 class. It had uh, two other Americans there. And uh, it was primarily Japanese students of the foreign contingent that were there were uh, Swedish, oddly enough. <laughs> so for those who don't know, the school I go to is Lakeland University of Japan out in Shinjuku, and its home campus is out in Sheboygan, Wisconsin. So it is, for all intents and purposes, an American university, and so it is taught like an American university. So the class dynamics are very interesting. Whereas, you know, most American universities, the teacher would ask a question to the class, somebody would raise their hand and answer the question, and they would carry on to the next piece of business. Uh, here, the Japanese students are a lot more reluctant to answer the question unless they are specifically called upon. So just having the teacher ask a question to the class, more often times than not, there would just be an uncomfortable amount of silence. And it would just make things really awkward. And after a while, I started speaking up a lot more, <laughs> just if anything, to kind of hurry this along and to uh, get rid of the, uh, the awkward pause. And it got to a point, and I actually talked with one of my professors about this uh, during a little student meeting. Is it always like this? And he's like, yeah. <laughs> so he's, he actually looks forward to uh, more talkative students kind of answering the questions and pushing things along. After a while, I decided to kind of hold back a little bit, let the other students answer some questions, and to also get some participation points. You know, still usually I'd answer some of the first questions, just kind of give other students the confidence to like, yeah, I'm gonna answer the question and then I would start to pull back a little bit. So that was very interesting, especially considering my introverted nature. More often than not, back in Mercogen land, I would just uh, sit in the back of the class and not say anything. And so during this time, um, money-wise, I was really living hand to mouth. I only had a little bit in savings at this time, and I was just hanging in there as best I could until the GI Bill would kick in at the end of February and then I would start to live like a normal human being again. <laughs> so I was just kind of holding off and then I was just waiting until March. You know, I'd have the money and be like, yeah, let's go karaoke or whatever the case. But uh, as you guys know, <laughs> if you've been following the news, uh, a certain global pandemic that I can't mention by name reared its ugly head. Lakeland decided to close down its campus and switch to online classes. Now, originally, this was just gonna be for a couple weeks and then we'd uh, get back to class business as usual. But uh, the pandemic lasted a lot longer than we had anticipated. So then it was decided to carry on the online classes for the rest of the semester. Now, the interesting thing about that was just the change in teaching styles. So uh, before my previous university, I think that they did it right to where they would give you X amount of homework at the beginning of the week and then expect you to have it all done at the end of the week. And so you'd have all this time to work on tests, quizzes, homework, whatever the case may be. As long as it's all submitted by the end of the day on Sunday, you were good to go. But uh, Lakeland decided to uh, conduct their online classes as if it were a normal class. So you'd hop into like Zoom rooms, and a lot of times it was just really difficult to get a hang of some things. You know, obviously the first couple weeks there was a lot of technical issues. Just the, uh, the idea of holding like real-time classes just for me wasn't very appealing and I feel it didn't really take advantage of the concept of having an online class to where you can just present homework and then if students have questions or something like that, if they want to meet up with the teacher or whatever, privately, they can do that. But at least this way you can kind of go at your own pace and uh, work on things because everybody has different uh, living situations and you know maybe work schedules, things like that. So it could be very difficult 
for students to go to these sessions and to participate actively. Especially with my living situation, because I lived in, live in a guest house, it was really hard for me to be in an environment that was quiet to where I could participate in classes. Guest house was either too loud <laughs> to where the teachers and students couldn't hear me, or if I were to move into a quiet environment, it would be almost like a library to where you couldn't speak. I had to find that nice little balance of things. And oftentimes I would actually come out to parks like these or just walking around in this little loop here. And then when it was my turn to speak, I would push to talk. Depending on weather and whatnot, that wasn't always an option. So then I would have to go to like restaurants and stuff like that. But yeah, it really did affect just my ability to get stuff done because not only was the guest house that I'm living at not really a viable option for me to go to class normally, it was also hard for me to, uh, to do homework as well because this global pandemic also affected a lot of jobs for the residents of the guest house. Whereas before I would usually do my homework in the mornings, go to class in the afternoon, or if I had morning classes, I would do it in the afternoons. This time around, there really wasn't any uh, spots available for me to do my homework in peace because it'd be a lot more crowded common areas. So it was really hard for me to concentrate. I couldn't concentrate in my personal area either because that's the area that I'm used to relaxing and sleeping and stuff. Oftentimes when I'm there, you know, my mind starts to wander to like sleepy town or relaxation, you know, kick back, watch some anime, go to sleep. So I had to make some concessions. And for the major assignments, I rented out hotel rooms for the weekend so I could sit down and write and catch up on assignments. Thankfully, I was able to recover from that. We were to treat this as like a basketball game or something like that with four quarters. Quarter one, quarter two, was doing pretty good. Uh, but quarter three, a little shaky baby. But uh, thankfully I powered out at uh, quarter four and ended the semester strong. So that said, let's go over overall grades. I got two A's, a C, and an AB. So for those who aren't familiar with what an AB is, and I didn't even know what it was so I had to look it up. It's basically in between an A minus and a B plus. So somewhere in there. So with all that tallied up, I got a 3.4 GPA. So I was so ecstatic. And it also got me off of academic probation. Just a little backstory. Um, when I first got accepted to Lakeland, my previous, previous college experience wasn't so good. I had a lot of failed classes, withdrew from the uh, college, took a break for a year, and then came back into it. And so uh, the dean was looking that over and decided I did have improved grades with the college I had previous to Lakeland. He decided based on my previous, previous academic track record, he decided to put me on academic probation, so I had to maintain above a 2.0 uh, in order to keep going. So obviously, I met and exceeded that goal, so now I'm officially off of academic probation, and it feels great, man. Overall, I'd say this experience was very unique. As you guys know, it has been documented. It took me a very long time to even get out to Tokyo, and that was a journey in and of itself. You know, it was a lot of self-development, a lot of saving up, a lot of trial, a lot of error, a lot of failure, but uh, eventually came out, and we came out strong. I couldn't ask for a better semester. So what's the future hold for the only Andy Sands Hamadeshta from here on out academically? Um, so I have one more semester left at Lakeland University of Japan, and then from there, I'm gonna graduate, get my associate's degree, and move on to a new school. Now, as far as what that school will be, will just depend on where I'm able to go because of, obviously, what's going on in the world and uh, my own academic options, I guess you could say. So the school I want to go to, first and foremost, is Temple University of Japan. It's another American university. This one, the home campus is based out in Philadelphia. They're kind of like the main school for foreigners wanting to come out and study out in Tokyo. But I wanted to get my associates before transferring over there so I wouldn't have to stay at the school for very long. If I do get accepted out there, then I'll continue on for three more semesters and then get my bachelor's. Currently at this time, uh, there was an issue with the main campus and how they dealt with their veteran students. So the VA pulled uh, their funding for the main campus and subsequently Temple University of Japan as well. I did check the, uh, the GI Bill website. It doesn't say anything about not being able to go. It just has like a little warning saying that they had some shady practices and stuff like that. And then I checked on Temple's own websites 
and they still have GI Bill information and stuff like that on there. So I'm assuming that they're still able to take the GI Bill at this time and they've resolved that issue. Uh, but I've also reached out to admissions uh, to see officially if they're able to take me on. And if so, you know, submit my transcripts, go through all the paperwork for that, and uh, move on from there. If Temple is not a possibility for me, the next move would be to uh, go back to America because there's really no other uh, American school option out here for me. Transferring to a Japanese university, they may not be able to accept all my credits. So if Temple isn't willing to accept me, then I'll have to go back to America. And as far as my options there, well, I could go to the uh, Lakeland University main campus out in Sheboygan, Wisconsin. One of the nice things about that is that they'll give you a $10,000 scholarship as a transfer student. And they'll also allow all your credits from Lakeland University of Japan to transfer over one-to-one. -one. For all intents and purposes, I could get my degree there and then come back to Japan. But ideally, considering all the paperwork and all the hustle that I had to put forth to uh, get my student visa out here, I would definitely prefer to stay out here in Tokyo, graduate, and then uh, move on from there. As for uh, right now, I'm on a bit of a, an extended summer break because originally I was supposed to be off for about a month, but uh, because the dean wants to actually physically open up the campus again, He's decided to delay it an additional three weeks. So I have essentially another month's worth of summer vacation before we start up the summer semester. You know, the good news with that is that the amount of time that I'll be in school hasn't changed. It's just shifted over three weeks. If I do get accepted to Temple, then the amount of time between transferring from Lakeland to Temple will be very minimal, maybe like a week or so. So as far as GI Bill goes, I'll still be able to retain payments and stuff like that, so there's not that huge payment gap. But the bad news is there is gonna be a huge payment gap at the beginning because, you know, obviously if you're not going to school, you don't get paid on the GI Bill. I just had to be very careful with my spending for uh, the next couple months until things start getting back on track. But once they do, I'm pretty much good to go for uh, the rest of the year. Now, as far as uh, other little bits of news here, I do plan on moving to another guest house and that's to not only be closer to Temple, should they accept me, but it's also to get my own private room as well. So that way, should something like this happen again, I'll have my own private room, be able to work in peace, won't have to spend all that additional money on hotels and whatnot, and be able to uh, maintain my focus. So yeah, that's pretty much all I want to say in this video. Um, if you guys have any questions about uh, studying abroad out here in Tokyo, Japan, um, I'd be happy to answer them. I'm no expert by any means, I'm only one semester in at this point, but uh, I do want to answer your questions as best I can. So if you have any, be sure to leave them in the comments down below in the boobity boops. And with that said, guys, this is the Andy Sign. Time for now, and as always, and forever, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye.